Welcome to this video in the Implementing Cisco IP Routing or Route uh, series. This video is about BGP Border Gateway Protocol and this is the introduction. My name is Ayman. This is my email down below. And I'm recording this for MakeItEasiest.com. Um, in this video, we are to talk about introduction to BGP. We also going to talk about the real internet uh, and uh, BGP tables. Also, we're going to talk about internet connection options um, to respond to the question when to implement BGP. Also, we're going to talk about the amount of updates or how to implement BGP. Afterwards, we're going to talk about BGP in action, uh, what kind of BGP messages being exchanged between uh, BGP peers or neighbors, uh, neighborship states, configuration, how we're going to configure the um, peer uh, relationship, how we gonna inject routes into BGP. Finally, in this video, we're gonna talk about verification and troubleshooting. So, uh, to start off, BGP is considered an exterior gateway protocol, EGP for short. Uh, this is a class of routing protocols that can be used between autonomous systems. For example, if we have autonomous system 100 and another autonomous system, um, autonomous system 200, and we need to exchange routing updates between them, most probably we're gonna use BGP and it is actually the routing protocol of the internet today. So um, autonomous system just like an ISP and actually, autonomous system is an entity that has multiple of routing systems, a lot of networks, and all of these systems and networks are under the same technical administration, just like an ISP, all right? So, um, actually, ISPs of today are using BGP version 4, to exchange routing updates over the internet. So, um, EGP exter exterior gateway protocol is different than IGP interior gateway protocol, just like RIP, OSPF, ISIS, and EIGRP. All these are interior gateway routing protocols. So, um, the thing is, uh, you will never, <laughs> you will never use an IGP to exchange routing updates over the internet between autonomous systems because we are talking about a lot of um, routing information, uh, prefixes um, over, over the internet. Uh, BGP uses TCP for transportation of messages, uh, namely port 179. Okay, so we are talking about um, establishing a TCP um, connection uh, between two peers prior to exchanging routing updates. So we are talking about uh, doing three-way handshaking, Okay, synchronization, acknowledgement, um, back and forth, being sent before having BGP peering session between two routers. In BGP, we need to explicitly configure neighbors. We don't have this um, automatically discovered neighborship through the use of hellos just like OSPF and EHRP. All right, we need to statically configure our neighbors. BGP is about exchanging uh, prefixes and at the same time it relies on the IGP table, okay, the routing table, and we're gonna 
view how exactly this um, actually happens uh, in a bit but we are to exchange routing prefixes in other words we use the NLRI term which is network layer reachability information or prefixes in other words BGP has wealth of path attributes we do not only rely on something that is called metric to decide which is the best path to reach to a prefix okay we have a lot of path attributes metric being one of them we have a lot of things and we're gonna talk about the uh, path attributes okay which are simply the deciding factor for BGP to choose one path over the other to reach a destination and by the way in BGP we do not have the concept of load balancing to reach one destination uh, we do not have the concept of concept of using multiple routes or paths to reach a prefix BGP chooses only one path to reach any prefix okay unlike the IGPs um, BGP is considered path vector routing protocol which acts similarly like uh, the distance vector routing protocol rep for example okay but we are talking about AS autonomous system path okay so it looks at um, which path which autonomous system path um, we gonna be traversing to reach a destination for example from autonomous system 100 to reach over to the network 140 40 30 slash 24 we are gonna be traversing autonomous system 200 then we are gonna go to autonomous system 400 to reach this network and we could be using the other way around through autonomous system 300 so it's about traversing autonomous systems in BGP and by the way most of the time BGP prefers the path that has the least amount of autonomous systems being traversed to reach a destination okay um, autonomous systems has autonomous system number as an ID which originally was 16 bit long okay um, but it has been modified to be 32 bit okay so uh, originally we have a specification for public autonomous systems from autonomous system 1 over to 64,000 and we have private just like public and private IPs we have public and private autonomous system numbers because actually an autonomous system number is an ID for an entity that needs to to communicate over the internet with other entities just like ISPs so uh, sometimes you need to communicate as a customer with multiple ISPs uh, using BGP but at the same time you don't want you do not want to have your own autonomous system number so in this case you may use a private um, autonomous system number that cannot be routed over the internet uh, we have different flavors of BGP we have internal and external uh, BGP implementations for example if we are to use BGP between routers in the same autonomous system just like router 1 router 2 and autonomous system 100 this relationship could be IBGP relationship internal but if we are to use BGP between router 2 and router 4 which are belonging to different autonomous systems we're gonna be using the flavor called external BGP and there are a couple of differences between uh, these two flavors 
and we're gonna talk about these differences in the upcoming session okay let's move on and talk about the real deal how exactly the internet works uh, most of us know how exactly the internet evolved from being um, a research project uh, totally funded by the Department of Defense, the US uh, DOD, and afterwards it has been um, used by um, commercial, um, well, ISPs, uh, ISPs that internet service provider that um, make it easy for customers to be dealing with each others and to communicate with other sites other customer sites through this uh, internet backbone on the internet we have uh, tier 1 ISPs tier 2 ISPs tier 3 actually tier 1 ISPs are considered the backbone of the internet and they providing transport to other places in the world so it is simply just like this uh, let's say autonomous system 100 200 300 and 400 are tier 1 autonomous system okay or tier 1 ISPs and these ISPs have um, high speed links between them okay mm, these ISPs tier 1 ISPs could be considered the backbone of the internet and each one of them is actually giving connectivity to tier 2 ISPs okay could be multiple of them and each tier 2 ISP might be dealing with tier 3 ISP and we as home users communicate with the internet through most of the time tier 3 ISPs and moving through different ISPs we could reach other parts of the world okay so um, this is how the uh, internet really um, or actually simply is about because uh, it is a bit more uh, complicated uh, than this but uh, just to give you guys an idea let's have a look at this wiki uh, wikipedia article okay uh, talking about tier one networks and to give examples let's go down here this is a list of tier one networks um, companies like quest verizon sprint uh, telesonera ntt um level three okay tata communication at and all these are actually tier one um networks okay that mostly they are located in the us okay and they provide global um transport for other um, isps like tier two and three all right um so over the internet we use public IP addresses and you could be doing um, IP lookup just to know to whom this